Hello, my name is Carissa, and today we're going to be doing a frequentist and a Bayesian independent samples t-test using JASP statistical software. The data set that we are using for our t-test um, is graduate admissions prediction data available on Kaggle, also available in the description box below. And in this data set, we have information on um, various components of graduate admissions, so GRE scores, uh, statement of purpose, scores out of five, letter of recommendation, again, ranked out of five, undergraduate GPA, research experience, either zero or one, um, indicating either they have or do not have research experience, and the chance of admission ranging from zero to one as a probability. And so what we're interested in understanding today is does research experience impact um, whether or not a person is admitted or their chance of admission into a program. So to get started with the t-test, we can go ahead and select t-tests, independent samples t-tests. So we're gonna start with the frequentist t-test, drag and drop uh, chance of admission, our dependent variable, what we're interested in um, understanding how it changes into the dependent variables box. We'll drag and drop research into the grouping variables box. Again, research is indicated by zero or one. So either students have or do not have research experience. And we're understanding, um, interested in understanding how these uh, two groups vary. So does the average chance of admission, um, is that affected by whether you do not have or do have research experience? Um, and we can also understand this through some simple uh, all hypotheses. So I'm gone ahead written these out. So our null hypothesis is that the mean chance of acceptance does not differ between people with or without research experience. And the alternative hypothesis is that it does differ in either direction between people with or without research experience. So we'll go back over to JASP um, and then back to our test. So we'll do a student test. Uh, we do not have a directional hypothesis. And let's all also go ahead and look at our location parameter, confidence interval, effect size, and we'll look at our descriptives before we interpret any of the information. So we have two groups. Um, it's a similar amount in both groups. The means and standard deviations are consistent, so we're not concerned about uh, heteroscedacity based on these, uh, the distribution. And um, I also looked at the distribution of these and they are roughly normally distributed, but given that we have so many um, people represented in this sample, we're not entirely too worried about, um, about this. So now going ahead and looking at the table, so JASP auto-populates a results table, as we can see here. Our test statistic value is 14.539. Our degrees of freedom are 498. P value is statistically significant, less than 0 0.001. We have our mean difference, um, our 95% confidence interval for the mean difference, and our effect size, which is point, or sorry, 1.31, also considered a large effect. So if we wanted to report this, we can go ahead and say uh, those with research experience had a higher chance of admission on average compared to those without research experience. And again, we have the same test statistics that is outlined in the table. And then based on Cohen's 1988 conventions, a D of 1.31 is considered a large effect. So now we'll go ahead and do the same test, but we're gonna do the Bayesian version of this. So we'll go ahead and select t-tests and then independent samples t-test under the Bayesian tab. Um, just as before, we are still interested in understanding chance of being admitted, and we are going to go ahead and group by uh, research. We do not have a directional hypothesis, so a lot of this remains the same. We already looked at the descriptives, but if you're interested, it's again, it's still there. We're going to go ahead and leave the default setting for the prior, which is a Kochi distribution with a scale of 0.707, um, which there are a couple papers that uh, by William Makers and colleagues and others that further elucidate this specific prior, um, but it is useful for uh, many analyses where we may not have 
prior predictions or information about the data. Um, but using this data set um, intuitively and also through our understanding of admission processes, we could reasonably outlined, outline an informed prior um, stating that research is likely going to you know, impact um, your chance of being admitted. And so we could also represent that data, but for uh, simplicity, we're gonna go ahead and stay with the default prior. Um, and then we're also going to, so we'll leave it as base factor one, zero, one in this case indicates our alternative hypothesis and one indicates the null hypothesis. So a base factor of one, zero means that we're getting information in terms of our alternative hypothesis. Um, let's also look at the prior and the posterior and a base factor robustness check. So while that's loading, we can go ahead and get started. So the base factor of one, zero, is 5.004 e to the um, 36, which is a extremely, extremely large number. Um, and so in this case, we can just say that our base factor is over 100. And so we have over 100 times more evidence in favor of our alternative hypothesis that um, chances of admission vary based on um, research, prior research compared to our null hypothesis that they do not differ. And the error, so the error percentage is just indicating the how stable the underlying algorithm is. And so in this case, our error is extremely low and that's great. So we'll go ahead and assume that this is stable. Uh, pretty much any errors under 10% are considered sufficient. So this is our, this dash line is our Kochi prior. As you can see, it's very flat. Um, it is very wide and it basically allows us to make similar predictions from both the null and alternative hypotheses um, where they have the similar strength in prediction. But now we can see that our posterior is shifted way over to the left and it definitely is much more dense than our prior distribution. So this is indicating that the data um, really is much stronger in driving this conclusion that um, people with research experience are more likely to get admitted. And we have our um, density on the y-axis and effect size in Cohen's delta, which is the um, population version of Cohen's D, which is what we use for effect size for a t-test in a Bayesian analysis. So that a Cohen's delta value, um, is in this case that has a median peak at negative 1.299 and a 95% credible interval of um, negative 1.494 to negative 1.104. And um, we get values both the base factor, base 10 and the base factor 0, 01. Um, and we can go ahead and look at our base factor robustness check as well. And this is just indicating that if we vary the prior um, a lot, how does that change our results? And based on this graph, we conclude not much at all. Um, no matter how much we vary the prior, um, making it super wide or, uh, yeah, basically the wider that we make the prior, the less information that we're putting into it. Um, we still get values that are between 10 to the 36 and 10 to the 37. So our results are robust in favor of our alternative hypothesis. So we could go ahead and interpret that as well by saying um, that we used a non-informative Cochi prior, which is a default setting in JAS. We observed a base factor base 10 of um, 5.004 to the 36. Um, plus or minus negative 0.001%. Again, that's our error percentage, indicating that the base factor is that much more times in favor of the alternative hypothesis. The chance of acceptance differs based on research experience relative to the null hypothesis. Based on Lee and Wagenmaker's and Maker's 2013 revision of Jeffrey's 1961 conventions, the base factor provides extreme evidence when explaining the data relative to the null hypothesis of no mean difference. Um, a base factor robustness check indicates that the base factor is stable, ranging between um, 
two very large numbers in favor of the alternative hypothesis, even when varying the width of the specified prior. Cohen's delta of 1.30 has a 95% credible interval of negative 1.15 to negative 1.10. And this indicates a large effect based on Cohen's 1988 rule of thumb with people with uh, research experience having a higher average chance of acceptance compared to those without research experience. The 95% credible interval tells us that 95% of the most probable values of the population standardized mean difference are contained in this interval. So I hope that this was useful and hopefully now um, you're able to do some t-tests using JASP. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions down below. Thank you.